Uh, first, I'd like to maybe introduce the first speaker, which is, is Kate from Queen's University in uh, Kingston, Ontario. Uh, she's a PhD student in psychology and she's interested in behavioral neuroscience. Uh, yeah, Kate, please go ahead and let us know what you have done. Great, thank you. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Kate and I'm a PhD student yes, at Queen's University and I will be presenting part of my master's work exploring the role of oxytocin on rats anxiety related behaviors. So oxytocin is a naturally occurring peptide hormone that's produced in the paraventricular and superoptic nuclei of the hypothalamus where it then is project, projects to the posterior pituitary for release into the bloodstream. It's commonly known as the cuddle hormone for its roles in reproduction and social bonding. However, oxytocin producing cells also send axons to various regions implicated in behavioral defense and anxiety, such as the amygdala and the lateral septum. And so it's not surprising then that oxytocin also has anxiety reducing properties. And one of the cool things about this system is that it is self-regulating, which means that higher levels of oxytocin release lead to higher levels of oxytocin synthesis. So rats are very social animals, and we see that housing with other rats has been shown to reduce their anxiety-related behaviors. And this suggests that social housing may have anxiolytic-like effects, which has been coined social buffering. Furthermore, it's likely that social buffering is regulated, at least in part, by oxytocin. Specifically, social conduct has been shown to upregulate the oxytocin system, and this could be because tactile stimulation increases the release of oxytocin, and pair-housed rats engage in a lot of tactile stimulation. In fact, two studies have even shown oxytocin expression to be increased in socially housed versus single housed rodents in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. And so part of the goal of my experiment was to see if I could replicate these findings. So the objective of my experiments were twofold. The first was to examine the effects of social housing on rats anxiety related behaviors. And the second was to see if these effects map onto changes in the oxytocin system of the brain. So 10 rats were randomly assigned to be single housed and 10 rats were pair housed for five weeks. And then at the beginning of the six week behavioral testing commenced with the elevated plus maze and the novelty induced suppression of feeding test or NSFT, uh, which I'll explain in a little bit more detail. And then the brains were harvested and processed for oxytocin labeling. So the elevated plus maze contains two open arms and two arms that are enclosed by walls. Rats tend to prefer to stay in the closed arms where they're presumably more protected. And so we measure anxiety as the amount of open arm exploration. And given my hypothesis that social housing should reduce anxiety, the pair housed rats should exhibit more open arm exploration than our single housed rats. Although it didn't reach significance, the results did point in the right direction with our pair housed animals, the light gray bars, displaying slightly higher percentage of open arm time than our single housed animals, the dark gray bar. So the novelty induced suppression of feeding test taps into rats natural dislike of novelty. So for four days, the rats are removed from their home cage and put into a novel cage before being given a palatable snack, in this case, a graham cracker. It's the same procedure for the single housed rats. They're also removed from their home cage and put into a novel cage for four days. And so anxiety is measured as the latency or the time to start eating the cracker. If social housing is anxiety reducing, then we would expect that the day with the most novelty, which is day one, should show the greatest group differences in latencies, and that as the rats um, become familiar with the snack, their latencies should end up being indistinguishable from each other over time. So we did find a significant main effect of housing, such that our pair housed animals, uh, the light gray bar, began consuming the snack faster than our single housed animals. And we also found a significant main effect of day, but no housing by day interaction, which indicates that the latencies decreased across days for both groups. And even though there was no interaction, it was still of interest to look at the behavior for individual days. And you can see here that the largest difference, the largest group difference in latencies was on day two, not on day one, as we predicted. I then harvested the brains and performed immunohistic chemistry in order to analyze oxytocin labeling in the hypothalamus. And so this is a picture of the paraventricular nucleus of a pair housed rat 
with oxytocin stained cells. And so pair housed rats had a higher number of oxytocin positive cells in the ventral parvocellular region of the PBN. As well, we found that as the number of oxytocin positive cells increased in three different regions of the PBN, latency to begin eating that cracker on day one of the NSFT decreased, which supports the idea of oxytocin having anxiolytic like effects. And so what I've shown today is that social housing decreased anxiety related responding, albeit primarily in the NSFT, and that social buffering upregulated the oxytocin system. And that concludes my presentation. And I do have discussion questions prepared, but I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Kate. Uh, thanks for the uh, really good um, presentation. Um, of course, now we'd be quite interested in the panel uh, or as well as the audience to ask as many questions as possible. So please feel free to use the question and answer the Q&A box or just uh, get in touch with us if you have any questions. Uh, are there any questions? So we can just unmute ourselves and- Yes, please. Okay. Hi, Kate. I, I think like one of the uh, most challenging thing here is to establish the relationship between the oxytocin and the anxiety behavior, right? Because the major uh, uh, experimental control is that the animal, one group of animals housed together and another was individually housed. Um, so there could be like so many more things changed besides the oxytocin level, right? So it's more like a correlation between the oxytocin expression and the anxiety level. So um, what do you think you can further stress the correla correlation or specificity about the oxytocin and anxiety? Like, Right, yeah, so you're absolutely correct that this is correlational and just because oxytocin seemed to be increased in the pair housed animals, uh, we can't know for sure if that is what is affecting anxiety. Um, that being said, there is research that have done more direct comparisons between the two and they've found that oxytocin is increased, for, exa for example, it's increased in response to social contact between uh, mother rat and pup dyads. It's, and that's um, meaning oxytocin is released or uh, there's higher plasma concentrations of oxytocin uh, in the pups as well as the mothers and as well as there's a high release of, um, or not high release, there's a release of oxytocin in the PBN um, in the pups. And so with that sort of information, we can then be a little bit more confident that the two are connected. Um, yeah, so with that being said, sorry, did I, did I answer your, your question? Yeah, I think. Yeah, but I think still this is a very challenging um, question because it's most of the time it's really hard to move from correlation to causal effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that, yeah. this okay. definitely requires more like uh, experiments, like for example, like in vivo control of the neural activity and see the outcome. Is there is there pharmacological blockers of oxytocin that you could use maybe? Yes, so actually I ran another experiment in which, uh, which I um, tested the effects of direct oxytocin infusion in the brains of rats um, on their anxiety related behavior. Um, so that was actually the second part of this experiment, which I haven't, I haven't presented today. And there we did see that when oxytocin was infused directly into the lateral septum, which is a region implicated in uh, behavioral defense in animals, we saw it decrease their defensiveness in the um, elevated plus maze. So the same test that, I, that I've shown here today. And so with that work, uh, we meant to do also um, an antagonism study, but uh, logistics were, <laughs> weren't right. Although other researchers have been able to do uh, um, oxytocin antagonism studies, not with the, actually, yes, yeah, sorry, one uh, did, two did them with the um, oxytocin antagonisms 
antagonist directly into the lateral septum, although they were done in mice. And they found a decrease in defensive responding, a decrease in anxiety-related behavior. Um, aside from that, though, we also see an oxytocin antagonist being used in the uh, medial prefrontal cortex, the periaqueductal gray, which is a center for pain, um, and the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus and all of those uh, with those antagonist studies um, were able to localize the effects of oxytocin in, in those regions implicated in, anxi in, in anxiety. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I have an, another question is that because you are focused on the uh, paraventricular nucleus, the PVN, uh, mm -hmm. which is definitely very important for anxiety behavior. And what we know is that activating these neurons would cause anxiety, right? So, and the majority of the PVN neurons are excitatory uh, because uh, glutergic. So I want to know if you have any idea whether these uh, oxytocin positive neurons are also glutamatergic neurons and what's, um, uh, what's the effect at cellular level with the oxytocin have on these uh, PVN neurons? Would they inhibit this group of neurons or would they increased activity of these neurons? Right, that's a really good question. Uh, in my research, I didn't find anything about, um, you know, for example, the co-localization of oxytocin on glutaminergic neurons. That being said, though, we know oxytocin is co-localized on neurons that produce CRH, or corticotrophin releasing hormone. We know in the paraventricular nucleus, we also know that oxytocin is co-localized on neurons that produce um, vasopressin, which works in direct opposition to oxytocin. So if oxytocin is, um, works to reduce anxiety-related behaviors, vasopressin works to increase them. Um, so that being said, you're right, oxytocin is, has, uh, predict, it's predicted to have um, in, inhibitory effects on like CRH release and um, vasopressin release. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't know its exact connection with glutaminergic neurons. Thank you. Uh, there are some questions here in the audience. Uh, there's a question from uh, Billy Lau. Billy, do you want to ask the question yourself or do you want me to read it? Billy, yeah, no, I was actually int uh, introduced to the Zoom. <laughs> I thought my Zoom crashed, but I guess I'm in. Uh, I'll, I'll ask the question. Um, it was a nice talk. I was just wondering if this is an anxiety-related behavior, have you looked at other anxiety-related markers like cortisol or cortical um, uh, releasing hormone, CRH? That's a really good question. So in this particular study, we didn't look at other um, stress-related hormone release. Again, other research has shown that with an increase in oxytocin is correlated with a decrease in corticosterone levels. It's um, also correlated with a decrease in CHR uh, release from the paraventricular nucleus. Um, so with that being said, I would suspect that if I had gone, if I was able to um, test other stress hormones and we would see the same sort of correlation uh, with that, an increase in oxytocin, there would be a decrease in these other stress related hormones. Unfortunately, though, uh, no, that wasn't something we were able to carry out in this experiment. Could I ask another question? Mm, absolutely. All right. Um, does it matter if it is same sex pairing or opposite pairing to see this kind of effect? That That's a super interesting question because we do see in the, especially because oxytocin uh, is so heavily implicated in social bonding uh, specifically, a lot of the oxytocin research is actually done in prairie voles, and that's because prairie voles are socially monogamous creatures. They form uh, one bond with Oh, I lost the sound. Oh dear, there seems to be a technical problem uh, with Kate's internet connection, I suppose. Let's see if it will recover in the next few seconds. Otherwise, we probably have to then go to the second uh, presentation. Let's wait maybe a minute or so. Mm -hmm. Sure.
Well, I suppose the internet connection. Oh, oh, what's going on now? The internet connection is now down completely. Um, I'm afraid we have to continue then. However, I would encourage you to just contact uh, Kate personally to just, uh, you know, support her research, ask her more questions. Um, her email address, I think, is available from the uh, from the abstract work. Okay, let's go to the second presentation.